Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph. Here to usher you in. It is August 30th. It is my last show for August. I'm excited. It's going to be Labor Day weekend. Uh, my coworker, Neil, is getting married, so it's going to be fun uh, activities going on all week long. I'll be one of the groomsmen, so it'll be a fun Labor Day weekend for me going up this weekend. going to be having a good old time. All right, so enough... <laughs> enough pandering to that. We're going to talk about a lot of different things happening today. Uh, some news, a uh, uh, lot of events happening this weekend as well. People, good opportunity to get out of town. Weather is looking much nicer. We're looking to have some definitely some higher uh, temperatures going into this next week with uh, uh, colder colds, but still keeping up with the, some of the warmer warms that we have seen throughout the summer. So we can expect to have at least cooler mornings They'll make you kind of second guess whether or not to wear a sweater in the morning. So let's jump right in. Um, City uh, Council, uh, last week they held a press conference uh, featuring uh, the big wigs of the urban forestry, including um, Mark Valiant of the um, Parks and Rec Division of Urban Forestry. Talks a little bit more about uh, all the things he basically helped steward and run the operations when it comes to open space. So a lot of the uh, land in Missoula that both the city and county have acquired through the open space bond. He's going to talk a little bit more about that. But like I said before, if you have any debris that is still around, if you want to uh, report any of that stuff, the City Street Division, you can call them at 406-552-6360. Again, that number is 552-6360. Uh, it's a great way for households that miss the pickup in their neighborhood. They can use that as a way. Otherwise, you could always take it down yourself to Larchmont Triangle. Um, which actually says it's permanently closed, so you can't take it to Largemont Triangle. Garden City Combos will continue to accept residential vegetation debris from the storm that, at no charge until the end of business at 5 p.m. on Saturday, August 31st, so they can resume normal operations beginning Tuesday the 3rd at 8 a.m. Northside City Lot. Um, there, this site will close permanently on September 2nd, uh, Labor Day at 8 p.m., so this will be your last chance to get, drop off any debris. Otherwise, you have to take it to uh, uh, Missoula Compost, formerly known as Echo Compost. So uh, to help clean up or anything like that, you can go to volunteermissoula.org for anyone looking to help out. Like I said before, crews estimate cleanup will be completed by early September. Um, and speaking of which, long-term uh, ramifications of the storm, Morgan Valiant with the Parks and Rec Division of Urban Forestry has this to say as some of the opening remarks. I've been working uh, kind of at a higher level with our, our Office of Emergency Management uh, on coordination uh, across the valley, um, doing direct. Uh, a, a lot of that has involved collecting information and data about the scope and scale of um, tree loss and hazards within our public uh, spaces and right-of-ways. Uh, a lot of that data collection effort, which is really going to um, dictate where we send resources to address issues, how we prioritize our work, and uh, where we spend uh, uh, our money. All right, and so there right now it's about data collection. I mean, it's very reactive kind of uh, group, so they can't really do too much with something that was kind of unheard of in terms of a storm. And so far the city has uh, mentioned over 40,000 trees were affected by the storm with hundreds of tree removals as a result and some of the questions during this press conference is the heating effect from the Missoula trees. And Marie uh, Ducharme uh, talks about the numbers a little bit further. Um, we've currently assessed about 11% of our canopy. So that number is gonna go up. And then as far as heat island effect, it is gonna have a significant impact on the residents in the city of Missoula. We don't know the scope of that yet. Once we feed all of that data, after it's all collected, it'll be fed into our tree inventory software, uh, which has a tool called I to I, uh, iTree, and it's part of the uh, TreeKeeper software suite. And that will actually calculate how much um, loss of heating and cooling we'll have. Okay, and so that is just one of the many data uh, operations that they're gonna be working on to move forward. So far, they have limited resource to mitigate uh, the damaged trees and putting the priority on trees that pose a risk to the right of way and actively manage, including, but not limited to, boulevards. Uh, ben Carson, urban forest manager, talks about some of the goals they have for these sites. 
Um, we are really looking to um, clear up transportation routes so that individuals can get to emergency services and such. And now, um, you know, it's four and a half, I guess, five weeks later, um, we're really getting into the nuts and bolts of looking at every single tree from a 360 degree view, um, observing any, tr any, any broken or hanging branches that are above an inch in diameter that could potentially cause damage in the future. Um, and this will help us generate contracts that we can then farm out to outside individuals, whether they be local companies or regional or national, um, to try and address these, uh, these potential hazards um, as, as expeditiously as possible. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a very laborious process. Um, I think we are at somewhere in the nine to 900 to 1,000 aerial hazard range, and we did approximately 20 blocks of inventory in the last week, and we've jumped uh, to over 1,500 locations that we have documented so far. Um, so if we were to extrapolate that data, we were looking at you know 3,500 to 5,000 uh, aerial hazards citywide in city rights-of-way parks, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so the, just a little bit of information going into this meeting. Um, they've only gotten a roughly around 15% of the city trees, not including those damaged, but the urban trees as a whole, they're doing what they can, and the urban forest is at a pace that service would allow, but with Parks and Rec, with volunteers and public right of ways, uh, many of those trees have been checked. And the in-between will take some time, including trees near uh, and around homes in various neighborhoods not just limited to the city of Missoula. And so far, cleanup is a, and major issues of trees take precedence over the numbers, which will take months overall. And so uh, Morgan Valley talks about the long-term goals that the city is going to be doing in terms of these trees. We've definitely got our hands full uh, trying to uh, both address those risks at, uh, and hazards uh, and then also document them so that we know the plan for the next week and the week and the month after that. Um, we very much will be cleaning up and dealing with tree issues from this event for I, I would say easily a year to 18 months um, and so we are still at the very beginning of this um, we have um, I'd like to say that we are we're kind of moving out of triage mode and getting we are definitely starting to do a little bit more long-range planning and um, the great thing is we do have these these resources that are now becoming available through both our state uh, disaster declaration and FEMA disaster de declaration and our joint incident command structure that has come together to help uh, work through this event. And so there's going to be a lot of things happening over the next few weeks, uh, especially in the de debris management side. We will have tub grinders coming in from outside our community processing that material. We are now working to get uh, arborists in the trees. And so like, you know, they're already dealing with a whole bunch of uh, short staff issues, a lot of different things moving um, into these positions and just trying to figure out exactly how they're gonna go about doing the overall cleanup. Um, you know, three arborists would be working on thousands of trees and will be a major hit to uh, basic services and removal is getting, going to be a task with planting new trees, especially the mounds that were built by all the debris aren't going anywhere soon, and most, if not all, will be dealt with eventually to make uh, way for the immediate. Uh, they, they are currently looking for, to gain money, but, would have to, but that would necessarily have to be more for removal, and would they need new resources for the new trees. So FEMA will cover a lot of the damages and a lot of the debris, but when it comes to planting new trees, they're gonna have to use the resources that they currently have, that they already have been doing, so definitely gonna be a major net loss to the trees in the Missoula area. And, you know, when he talks about these horizontal uh, tub grinders, this is the kind of example of what they're gonna be using for their uh, cleanup. It's gonna be a major grinder. They're gonna try to grind up most of these kind of uh, trees. Um, like I said before, this will be your last weekend to uh, deliver any debris or any of those kind of uh, stuff to uh, those de some, some of those designated zones. The city uh, has broken it up to about six zones to spread resources to mitigate tree debris with access to transportation and more. They also wanted to mention that with all the debris that was collected, they said they could fill the Washington Grizzly Stadium. So up next, we have a regular city council meeting that dove into rezoning for the first part following by large, longer meeting addressing the Aspire development. If you have not been following the Aspire development in the last two weeks that I've been talking about it in my morning show, the area of East Missoula, which has no city influence except in the case 
to improve infrastructure for the future development, which people live in East Missoula have spoken against this development and saying that their voices are not being heard and they have no real say in the city public since they are under the county government purview. Brian Throckmorton, 406 Engineering, addresses the concerns of traffic that were brought up by East Missoula residents. They understand the traffic that's going to come in at summers, and so they're going to work to design with the idea of understanding that traffic. Um, some things that may help, I know that the county has an impact fee that we, was brought up at LUP that we can definitely use some of the impact fees for pedestrians to maybe help with sidewalks in that area. Um, and then also, you know, if there's any future costs in RSID, we have no protest in that area as well. So kind of not a great update, but again, um, the county didn't have a lot because they haven't even received the money yet, so they haven't started down that road. And so, so far the developer has most of their principal development through their system, uh, through planning board and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, he suggested a condition of approval which would be uh, used to a road through Robinson Street that would later connect as development phases in to the development off Summer Street, which was the main way of getting to the proposed development from Highway 200 accessed in East Missoula. Andrea Davis, the mayor of Missoula, talks about the major rezoning and the city influence on county land being developed, and this is what she had to say. There's a number of motions on the floor. I appreciate the clarity that um, uh, City Attorney Sudbury provided earlier just in regards to um, council consideration um, on items that would be, um, for example, if, if council members do disagree with the findings of fact in the staff report that there is um, uh, basically documentation of fact or um, that you're documenting your conclusion of law. I will say that a public comment in support or against of an item is, is not conclusion of law. And I just want to say that because I think oftentimes we hear from members of the public that say, but we showed up in either support or against things and it was passed one way or the other. And really the council are considering um, land use law and existing um, uh, land use plans that are uh, established. All right, so basically a lot of what the city is trying to uh, communicate with the public, especially people in East Missoula, is that developers have a little bit more say in what they're developing on their own private land. The majority of members of the public are against this development as a whole for many of the issues related to major development to the threat of annexation in the future, as this originally would be a county thing, but the city involvement might have raised some red flags in people's minds, which include this folk. Um, Bruce Braxter, resident near the Aspire development, who gives his public comment on this area. At the August 21 Loudon Use Committee meeting, I shared a, some, a comment that someone had filed a civil complaint against my property. Dave Sanson of Denova Homes felt I had insinuated that complaint came from Denova. And he said he and his employees do not do business that way. I believe him, so I hereby publicly apologize. East Missoula is a scenic, quiet neighborhood. We ask three concessions from the City Council. Montana Avenue, Canyon View Drive, have view lots. We enjoy views of the Clark Fork River, the River Corridor, the wildlife migrating along the open space, the open space on the golf course, the River Corridor, the railroad in the Hellgate Canyon. At high water, we can see the rafters floating by, and we can see the river when it is roaring near flood stage. Canyon View Drive is called Canyon View for a reason. The planning board voted to reject DeNova's original overlay zoning plan and recommended a redesign of the housing plat. If DeNova's original housing plat is rubber stamped and DeNova builds two-story houses, only the DeNova housing will have any views. East Missoula will no longer be a scenic, quiet neighborhood. There are no two-story houses adjacent to the Aspire property. Two-story houses do not match the character of the neighborhood as required. We ask that DeNova not block the views of Montana Avenue, Canyon View Drive with two-story houses. We ask that an adequate wildlife open space be left along the riverbank. Most people who have lawns, weed spray their lawns. Weed spray studies show that from over 75% of waterfront sprayed lawns, the weed sprays get washed down into the waterways. We've regularly walked the length of East Missoula for 35 years now, and we recently counted 13 new multi-story housing complexes currently being built or completed along Highway 200, where we all have to drive. All right, and so that was part of Bruce Baxter's comments during that meeting. 
Uh, the view shed, which is what he's probably which is what he's referring to, is one of those many things that people buy their homes in areas. And as infill happens, things like this will continue for better or for worse. Uh, the best thing the city can do and and has done is mitigate the impact through zoning and working through the state laws that inf influence land use. From our joint city county planning board, uh, Kate Baker also gives comment on this uh, development as well. Hold on. I'd like to know whose idea it was to shove a development of $800,000 homes into a traditionally blue collar neighborhood and then decide to call it Aspire. What are we aspiring to? Are we aspiring to ruin precious riparian habitats? Are we aspiring to put kids in danger? Are we aspiring to break ordinances that were put in place to protect the people and character of neighborhoods? Are we aspiring to create haves and have nots? My husband and I have put everything we have into our home. And if you vote yes on this, we will have to stare at a big sign reminding us that we didn't aspire high enough to deserve peace and safety for our children and neighborhood. Please vote no on this development and let's build something better that won't leave so many hurt in its wake. Thank you for your consideration. All right, so that was one of the comments as well. And then as we go further down, we got the uh, property owner, uh, Dave Sanson, who, uh, uh, who's the owner of the proposed Aspire property had some things to say in response to some of the public comments. And I'm not saying that what we're building is affordable or what we're proposing to build is affordable, but any new housing helps. And what the, what the intent here was with your staff and through your growth and housing elements is to create a blend of density and mitigation and community enhancement. So we can't do it the old way. We can't go back to doing it the way how maybe East Missoula looks today or other parts of town. But we can do it in a thoughtful, conscious method that mitigates the impacts like on Summers Avenue where we've put in extensive voluntary improvements to, because we've listened to the people of East Missoula and trying to create public safety with sidewalks, widened streets, parking lanes, because yes, this was designated as a collector street for that region to service this land many decades ago, way before any of us were here. Okay, and so that's very much uh, the same argument of private, private property owner wants to make a major development and many comments following were against this development, which spent a good time going into details about how their lives would be greatly impacted. Lee, Bridge, Lee Bridges, talks about the uh, city influence on this particular development and how uh, it kind of speaks for uh, East Missoula's um, you know, lack of input in city affairs. This is our simple ask. We just want it to stay in the county so that we have a voice in what happens in our community. We feel like this is an isolated thing where the city has this three times the size of our units being stuffed in and creating all these problems for us that we don't have a voice in, in, in working with the solutions on. We don't, we're not your voters, we're not your taxpayers. We are county and that's all we're asking. We know the developers are gonna develop housing out there and we need housing. We're not disputing any of that, but at least if it remains in the county, we have a voice in how our neighborhoods are cohesively built and together and structured with, with our infrastructure and we become a part of it and we're not separated like this. It's, there's so much disconnect going on between this high density city development versus just doing it with our community. We'd like to have some input. All right, so that was Lee Bridges uh, reflecting on this. And then as we get further into the meeting, we actually have comments from city staff and uh, city council members. And Lee wants this item to stay in the county and as many comments that she never got outreach from developers concerned about traffic issues currently in the summer street area of contention and the uh, potential for future uses as traffic congestion 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 will only get worse as the population increase uh, christian jordan a city council talks about the city code and how neighborhoods are suffering from growth policies in the first place 
The discordance between the planning board and the city planners exemplifies this mismatch between city code and the growth policy. Additionally, lower density and or lower socioeconomic neighborhoods are suffering from a mismatch, from that mismatch between the city's growth policy and the existing code, which is reflected in the planning board's decision. My ward, which is Ward 6, Franklin to the Fort, River Road area, and others are getting overwhelmed by the dense apartment complexes surrounded by single-family homes and duplexes because it's more profitable. And finally, addressing the housing crisis through density but not affordability is problematic. Missoula is a de desirable place to live, and as such, housing prices are going to remain high for years to come. So as previously mentioned, I will be voting no for all the reasons mentioned. All right. So that was uh, Christian Jordan reflecting on that. And as you get further into this, David de Grandpre with CPDI within the city talks about the growth policy and how it applies to this development. The thrust of these plans is to look at the city's growth through different lenses. One of them, and perhaps the most important, is housing. We all know that uh, that we need a lot of housing units to make housing more affordable. You know, the, the thrust of it has been to increase the supply of housing. And, and ultimately, we hope, uh, you know, there's a certain amount of demand if we increase supply, which is basic economics. We hope that that will help to meet some of the demand and, and prices can begin to fall as vacancy rates increase. We also have equity ideas. And so, you know, what the lens of equity means, at least in my, the way that I'm viewing it, is that we're trying to provide different types of housing. So it's not only large lot housing. You know, so East Missoula, it's true. I, I think some of the commenters have said that, that lots in East Missoula are typically larger than the single family lots here. That's accurate. Um, but part of it, part of this, the notion of equity is to provide more opportunity for housing and smaller lots, increased density really help to do that. Also different types of housing. So this proposal has you know, a multi-dwelling component as well. And so we're trying to hit different price points. Like the many things that the city has done with this new newer growth policy that was implemented back in 2018 is the fact that they're trying to have transitional housing uh, dwelling units from low to higher density as they get further down. Um, if anything, it'd probably look a lot more like what they did with the uh, expressway uh, building and development. Of course, they'd have given out renderings of the development as they move forward. Um, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, this site isn't interesting because it, uh, it's using technically virgin property developed to city standards to, to get annex and infrastructure ready for annexation. The city so far is pushing for code reform and making development in these city-owned areas predictable, even though it might not be uh, to the standards of East Missoula. Eric Melson, City Council, spoke about some of the issues with the development process and how a lot of these amendments have been put forward to help move uh, these things along for these uh, re uh, subdivisions. The planning board said it was too dense. The residents are saying that it's too dense. I think a key indicator of, of that is the sheer number of variance re requests, which to me is a strong signal that the design is not appropriate for the site. So considering all of these factors collectively, I find it difficult to support the project. I feel like the risks of and unanswered questions outweigh the costs uh, and it's something that really struck with me it, it was mentioned tonight again which is I think the residents understand that there will be a development here like this this is a logical place for a development but I think we can do better than what has been presented I think that we can look at the density again and find more compatible solutions that enhance the existing neighborhood um, and make life great for that area yep and so for uh, many of the d uh, dwelling that have been proposed over this uh, time uh, period uh, many uh, city council members are in support of this development unfortunately the uh, uh, the uncertainty of this area is prompting this development to go back to committee to answer some of those issues pertaining to access natural environments updated traffic studies to name a few and this will be ongoing but the 35 acres which will include 182 lots with around 250 housing units who will tie into city services and will also include two new parks and four uh, of, of more than four acres. More or less, this whole area will be developed by 2035, which includes six phases through this process. And so if I give you a kind of a glimpse of it, phase one is essentially this blue area that goes along the river and uh, starts popping in, and then we get further down uh, the river as we go through here, and then goes phases back inward and then it wraps up with a phase six at the very uh, triangle corner of the East Missoula lot. And so that's kind of like what they plan to do 
uh, with this particular site. And you know, this is just uh, one of the major things that uh, I've noticed the city definitely does is a lot of times they want to get things prepared for have more infill development. That's part of the Missoula's growth policy. And like I said, since 2018, the city has been doing these kind of developments where they have uh, a bigger bang for their buck in terms of developers to have this kind of stuff while also addressing the concept of having that overlay that a lot of the public comment has referred to to keep the neighborhood character aesthetic. And the developer has worked down to a certain area as in having 7.1 um, per, uh, 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 per acreage kind of uh, dwelling unit kind of deals. Oh, sorry, let me, let me re reiterate. So they kind of started off with having a large amounts of unit dwelling units per acre lots, and then they kind of uh, it, uh, put, it, put it further down to about 7.1. Um, I'm kind of basing this off most of my memory. Um, I remember it being like a 7.1 um, deal as, as low as they got, and that still was pretty dense compared to what they were already having for most of the East Missoula area. So this development was pushed through, its subdivision was phased, but the development process is still going to be ongoing, and the city's going to be looking at this further down as they go through the community process. Uh, but at the same time, this has been subdivided to allow for development to start breaking ground at some point in the future. So that's what's happening there. Um, let's see. Um, some community meeting kind of uh, notes here before I move on to my next topic. Um, they were talking about uh, getting rid of energy in the climate action team for a new task force, and they did this for the climate conservation parks. So it was a short meeting. Uh, Public Works are going back to the UM to talk about their new student living building. They talked a little bit about that. that on Wednesday. Um, one of the things is that if you want to learn more about some of these uh, grants that are made to help develop uh, these sites, uh, they're called the CBD, CDBG grants and home program, the urban development grants. Um, also, uh, Missoula Public Library is getting a sub award of $117,500 from the, uh, uh, the city's National Institute of Health Science Education Partnership Award. Um, City County joint meeting on the expenditure of up to $344,000 of open space bond money towards the acquisition of conservation land easements on Idra land property consisting of 1,667 acres and to be held by the Five Valley Land Trust. This particular meeting was kind of taken off at the last minute, but this is something that kind of they, they posted and they're going to plan on probably talking about this sometime in the future. But I noticed that this trust would continue for years beyond the Five Valley Land Trust, which is the stewards of the land, and they've been doing this kind of stuff for many, 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 many years now. And so, um, and most of those meetings were about 10, 20 minutes long, and I didn't really want to show you too many of the clips, um, but I want to give you kind of an overview of some of those community meetings that happens every Wednesday. Up next, we have a legal drama from the kids of our summer camps. Uh, and without further ado, here is Dr. Meow Meow's uh, deposition. <laughs> Come on now. Here we go. Dr. Lawyer Meow Meow. I'm here to ensure the safety of my client. For Dr. Lawyer Meow Meow has committed identity theft, murder, and the worst of all, robbing of homes. Do you have anything else to say for yourself? The reason I did all this is because of that cat. Cat scratch me, and if the crap This is not a trial by what my client did in the past. 
this is a trial about what you might do in the present and future. You can scratch me, and now I can't take the swing off. Well then, maybe I will. Fighting the evil Skelly Men. You never steal our Bubble Hill, Skelly Men. <laughs> I will take over the Bubble Hills. Go, Go Robots! NCAT Animation Drop In Workshops every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m., located in the Missoula Public Library, 455 East Main Street. I'll get you next time, Robots! Next time! Go, Go Robots! Anyways, uh, welcome back. Um, <laughs> we are here to talk about uh, some movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for some pre-critic. Uh, kicking things off is we got Mr. Jellybean himself from the President of the United, the Screen Actors Guild to the President of the United States comes Reagan, or Reagan for people who listen. Uh, get your commemorative coin, boomers. Your hero, Ron Reagan, is here to remind you of the good times of the 80s with the retrospect movie that has Dennis Quaid play the man who coined the term Reaganomics. Uh, uh, to a point that even spell check on my computer knows how to spell Reaganomics. It's crazy, right? Uh, when the country is dealing with a lot of hippies shoehorning their candidates in after Watergate, pff, what are they complaining about? Only one man can charm his way to the presidency. Enjoy a series of famous moments from debates to speeches to the war on drugs with a love story that's actually a quite uh, uh, good as Nancy is a big part of Mr. Jelly Bean himself. Then we move over to You Got to Believe baseball movie that has a cameo from a fat kid from Sandlot only briefly to introduce a Bad News Bear type of team as they have to play baseball to heal their father a coach by winning the game that will change their dad's fate. Enjoy a nice underdog story there that, uh, about teamwork and overcoming odds based on a true story where uh, whether or not their dad lives um, depends upon how well they play in a baseball game. Anyways, this movie is called Afraid and they replace the uh, AI with the uh, emphasis on this, just like they did in the movie Megan where they put the three instead of the E. Anyways, this movie is basically about an AI element to uh, coast on the past success of inserting winks and nods to the people by using wordplay. Uh, enjoy Technology Bad and Will Kill You movie about computer systems that go boo rather than uh, 
that one movie, Her, which basically is more haunting in retrospect because a person had to live with the fact that they are alone and they're off a system is not a real person. But real enough to give them the dopamine rush that doing everything for you so, oh, so you become inept at life. This one is more is about the whole like retrospect of boo, got you, you're dead, technology bad kind of movie. All right. So, and then wrapping things up, um, in space, momentum is important to go through the power of a slingshot, which is what this movie is called, a slingshot. Uh, these spacemen can do the thing that they have to do to survive, but can they do it before it's too late? Like most space movies, there's always the bad things in space, which requires ingenuity to figure those stuff out. So essentially, the astronaut is alone and begins to see things and remember things on his uh, one-way journey to space. Remember, you know, you know, desert island movies? Basically, these new space movies have basically become the desert island movies in space, whatever happened to those um, island movies. So Triangle of Sadness, we're not talking about that, but sure. Uh, but Isolated on an Island, who knows, but Isolated in Space, you can expect this kind of stuff. All right, moving on. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of I I dropped the ball on that last one. But up next, we have a new dub and stuff from the 1960s colorized movie, but Beyond the Time Barrier. I, I assume it's about an astronaut that goes through time. Uh, sorry about these triangles. The architecture, they just really love triangles. Uh, you know how long this is going to take? Well, not quite sure. We're the ones with the guns, so you should probably listen to us. Is there anyone coming to visit? Well, yes, sir. There are people on their way. To your authority, Minister. I really hope that these triangles really strike fear into the citizens of our nation. Yes, sir. I think it gets to the point. Uh, do you get my joke? Because triangles have three points. Sir, your wit has never fallen short of humorous. Oh, that was very kind of you. I better save that one for my top five. Now go get the guy. Uh, as you please. <laughs> all right, Mr. Guy. Make sure you laugh at all of the minister's jokes or he will execute you on the spot. Oh, Seriously? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, so you're the guy that everyone's been talking about. So what's going on? Tell us in your own words. Well, I was here just minding my own business. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, that seems to check out. Please continue. Well, I was hoping you wouldn't vet everything that I say, so I'll make this very quick and concise. I promise I won't interrupt you. Go ahead. I'm a test pilot for another organization, and I just so happen to crash land on your city, and everyone's just like, hey, you don't belong here. Mm-hmm. That sure was it. And then I was captured with all these guns and triangles and such, and everyone's just like, fear the point. And I was like, I don't understand. And then they just took me away, and here I am, all confused. We don't get many non-triangle people in our town. So you can understand our reluctance with your sudden arrival. Well, I must tell you that I mean you no harm. Oh, yes, we know, but regulation calls for non-triangle-shaped ships to be confiscated and the person to be executed on the spot. But my daughter did vouch for you, and I trust her judgment. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know triangles were very important to you people. You know, if I could just be on my way and I won't bother you anymore with my non-triangle stuff. Uh, sir, we need to talk about this. Each pillar of the triangle represents the three factors of our consensual... Well, my daughter has the hots for this guy, so we could probably let him go if that's okay. Oh, no, you embarrass me. Oh, well, I suppose we can just lock him up and such. Hmm, but the law decrees that if they want to live in our triangle town, they have to live by our triangle life and our triangle cars and our triangle houses and triangle apartments and triangle designs. All right, take him away, put him in prison, do that thing. Uh, yes, sir. One, two, three. Triangle. Oh, a likely story. God, why, why you you better hold him I'm back, guys. Uh, don't let him you go. Well, he I'm is dangerous. What are you talking about? Non-triangle and all. I know that was very hard for you to watch, but I'm here for you. And I know that you really like this guy, and I promise you. And like what we used to say in old Triangleberg, make sure the spaghetti has plenty of isosceles on top of it. Always remember that. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. When you think about it, I saw Salis. Get it? Mwah.
guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some uh, news items that are happening in and around the city of Missoula and beyond. As some fires come through Montana with the southeastern fire that started last week, the Remington fire started in Sheridan County, Wyoming, and quickly moved into multiple uh, counties in southeast Montana and is currently mapped at 184,127 acres burning in, burning in short grass and timber. The fire started October, uh, August 22nd and has expanded over nearly 200,000 acres, forcing pre-evacuation orders and 276 fire crews trying to deal with this. According to Q2 out of Billings, uh, news tribal resources were staged in the uh, Burmese uh, community hall through throughout the night to help uh, fight the fire. Lots of the community have come together to offer assistance and help. In Lame Deer, the Boys and Girls Club of Northern Cheyenne Nation has been established as a shelter for those needing a safe place to go. Uh, while that's happening uh, in their neck of the woods, the Miller Peak fire was contained south of Missoula about uh, another, f uh, was contained south of Missoula a couple weeks ago. Missoula has another fire that started last night, uh, that started uh, Sunday uh, over the nearby region due to lightning strikes. This is a thousand acre uh, Shero uh, uh, Creek fire. Uh, four miles west of Stevensville in the latest fire in western Montana. The managers and River Valley County Sheriffs have ordered evacuations due to the Sharo Creek fire and follows um, the residence areas Kootenai Creek west of intersection uh, Timber Trail west of the west side Sharo Hill Loop which include residents of Blue uh, Grouse Lane, Red Tail Hawk Lane and Porcupine Lane, Walmart Lane west of St. Mary Road, St. Mary Lookout Road west of intersection of St. Mary's Road Currently standing at 1,300 acres, the fire remains. Crews will be on hold to eastern edge of and patrol the affected neighborhoods during night shifts. The Red Cross Evacuation Center is still available at the Latter-day Saints Church in Stevensville at 100 Middle Burnt Fork Road. Evacuation questions can be directed through River Valley County Emergency Services through 375-6650. Again, that number is 406. 375-6650 for those who are wondering if they are in evacuation or pre-evacuation in those particular areas. We'll be heating up the next couple weeks with cooler overnight temperatures to make you second guess not bringing an extra layer in the morning. Uh, uh, and you know, as the weather improves, there's definitely some things uh, in um, Missoula that we're gonna definitely see with uh, cooler temps that kind of ended today and yesterday with interesting temperatures uh, going as low as the 40s, but we're gonna see some uh, lows into the 40s happening sometime, not this week, but next week with some uh, higher temperatures still kind of remaining in the uh, low 90s, but we're gonna go back into more of 80 degree temperature next week with uh, the introduction of more fall-like weather as we start seeing highs into the 70s and we're gonna see some really uh, good uh, sweater weather going into the rest of the season. So uh, let's talk about some other news that is happening and the overcrowding. Uh, the county jail is in the process of getting inmates transferred to state prison because of overcrowding. Missoula County this month launched a dispute with the state agency saying that it's used local jails to house its own inmates and not funding the full cost in doing so. According to the county, the running cost of housing a single inmate for one day in a local jail stands at $125 per day but the Department of Corrections reimbursed the county only $82 for holding one of the inmates. Um, Missoula Current also reported that the Montana State Prison currently stands at 1,588 uh, inmates, while operation capacity is at 1,526. The Montana Women's Prison listed its population at 247, with its operational capacity at 400, uh, 240, so there's seven more there, and then there's about uh, 62 more inmates in capacity in the state prison. Uh, the state and mental health are at the worst it's been in years with the state defunding many of the Western Montana Mental Health Institute, which for a time helped fund the flagship after school program. Many of the nurses that work out of Warm Springs uh, State Mental Health Hospital has pushed letters to the state for not doing enough to, and not having present leadership. And, you know, speaking of present leadership, one of the big news items that have happened recently is that they call this new guy, uh, Brian Nicole, the newest CEO, the Messiah of the new Starbucks as they move forward. But he's not actually going to be living in the Starbucks Seattle area. He lives about a thousand miles away in which he'll be chartering a flight every, uh, ever so often every week to do this. And back in 2018, the company made a lot of noise on how it was getting rid of plastic straws and working towards a recyclable and compostable uh, cup solution. Many internet trends that followed even Taylor Swift of excess use of private jets essentially means that they can use anywhere between 120 and 380 gallons per hour of flight time in the private jets. Starbucks has an interesting 
uh, view the last couple of years uh, as unions became popular during the pandemic with the peak of the American auto workers getting their deal with the big three manufacturers. And so far, unions have seen a 70% favorability among Americans as cost of living and inflation make life a lot harder for individuals to make ends meet. The upswing in support were organized later, which paradoxically comes even at U.S. union membership remains near at an all-time low, has been attributed to a wave of success. Organized in recent years, including the unionization of more than 480 Starbucks stores across the county. Recent organized labor wins are reflected in the year's survey finding that 34% of respondents believe that unions will become stronger than they are today, and that's up from 19% last year. Efforts to crack down on union busting and expand protections for working people have resulted in snap elections for unions to be decided by union busting tactics were used against the folks gathering for collective bargaining agreements. So that means essentially a lot of worker protections have been put in place that even if union busting was proven that they could create snap elections to help uh, bolster unions. So by fighting unions, you almost help create unions. And as we go into Labor Day weekend, note that much of the history of labor unions actually dates back to Montana. Um, and you can learn about this through an old book, The Cold Millions by Jess Walter, highlighting the days of union and union busting where police were used as instruments of union busting. Uh, the Cold Millions offers a kaleidoscopic, scopic, kaleidoscopic portrait of a nation grappling with the chasm between the rich and poor. This uh, fiction uh, story tells the story, uh, follows two brothers as they navigate the working world at a turn of the century and deal with cops and tramps, suffragettes, and socialists, madams, and murderers. If, if there's no pro-union book to read, this is it. And it was featured in last year's Montana Book Festival, which unfortunately, sadly this year, the library and Missoula will not be hosting the Montana Book Festival due to unforeseen circumstances, according to their website at montanabookfestival.com. They'll be hosting a smaller gathering next weekend, starting first Friday, during the first Friday art events at Missoula Public Library. And speaking of events, we're gonna jump right into some of the local events that are happening in the city of Missoula. So kicking things off, we have our regular stroller strides for mommy and me workout classes at the Bonner Park starting at 9.30 this morning. Money Missoula Butterfly House and the Sectarian have their open hours every weekday at 10 a.m. Um, they also have a predator feeding at uh, around 10.30 most days. In Power Place, open play area. This is uh, their hands-on learning center looking at the Montana Missoula Food Bank and Community Center dedicated to nourishing the bodies and minds of local children and families. One part community center and one part social, uh, science museum, one part food hub and one part library. This is, not, this is something for everyone. Learn uh, uh, and power place, rich with science exhibits and spectrum literacy and STEM programs this, uh, and books from Missoula Public Library for children, young adults and parents. So power place is the place to be while you're also getting some fresh and cheap nutritious food for your family um, throughout the week. Um, they're open from about 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Fridays with longer days on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, also, the Missoula Public Library is hosting a Tiny Tales. This is a great way for kids to uh, get involved with uh, books, but also do some engaging activities with the Missoula Public Library on the second floor every Friday at 10.30 a.m. Lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. So at 11.30 a.m., the Missoula Senior, Senior Center hosts a uh, luncheon for folks of 55 and older. Uh, the Pavarello Center also has a lunch program that does, happens daily, but the lunch program at the Missoula Senior Center is only Monday through Friday. Uh, yarns and watercolor at the Missoula Public Library at the fourth floor at noon every Friday. Um, overdose prevention and response training at Shields at Southgate Mall at noon this weekend. And it's not ha only happening today, it's also happening tomorrow. Learn about the ways to combat opioid overdose crisis in community in honor of International Overdose Awareness Day, which is happening tomorrow. The Missoula Drug Safety Coalition will be holding free overdose reversal and prevention drug training at Shields at the Southgate Mall. Free Narcan will be provided in this. And also, I wanted to mention that I just got an email from United Way uh, talking about the international awareness as well. And so for the dates that are happening today and tomorrow, an observation of the uh, Overdose Awareness Day, United Way of Missoula is calling attention to 22 Missoulians who died in 2023 due to fatal drug overdoses and the 305 local emergency department visits for non-fatal opioid overdoses while also remaining the public of availability for free harm reduction kiosks in Missoula. So the dispensary and life-saving zone, commonly known as Narcan. And so the following locations at Mo Mountain Line Transfer Center at 200 West Pine Street, Missoula Food Bank, 1720 West uh, Wyoming Street, Johnson Street Shelter at 1919 North Avenue West, 
Hope Rescue Mission at 2811 uh, Latimer St uh, Street, Suite 223. And they are proud to be one of the partners in Missoula's Overdose Awareness Day, shedding light on the tragedy affecting hundreds in our community. Uh, said Susan Hay Patrick of United Way of Missoula, County Chief Executive of Making Our Community Safer is part of the United Way's mission to build a better Missoula for all. All right. Um, as we get further into events, if you're interested in having your youth uh, being interested in writing, Missoula Public, uh, Missoula Public Library hosts a youth writers group every single Friday at 3.30 p.m. Great way for people to get in exposed, also improve their writing while they're at the perfect time to do so. Summertime Lego Club at 4 p.m. This is an ongoing thing as they're going to be wrapping up their summertime. They're going to more like Lego Club in the afternoons. Um, earlier afternoons was what I mean. The Grand Salmon Source to See film premiere. Free Cycles is hosting uh, three women on a 78 day paddling expedition. This, uh, the, gra the Grand Salmon explores the effects of four dams in the lower uh, Snake River and their impacts throughout the watershed. It's rapidly enduring wild salmon populations. This is a film premiere document, uh, documentary at 5.30 p.m. Um, at the Free Cycles of Missoula. Um, also what's happening, uh, con uh, con uh, conversations, student voices at UM Art Program at 5.30 p.m. The Alley of Radius Gallery. This exhibition spot, uh, spotlights some of the themes and ideas important to students of the School of Visual and v uh, Media Arts at the University of Montana. This Issues are diverse and reflect wider cultural concerns, the environment, identity, war, spirituality, and the uh, interior emotional life underlie the work the, that is created for this show. And this is going to be through the uh, Radius Gallery, and you'll probably have signs to help you find the area in which they mean by the alleyway. Uh, um, Dungeons and Dragon Guild for Adults. This is a virtual program through the Mission Public Library every Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, Garen and me at Play, going to be playing some folk music at Imagination Brewing Company. And then starting at 6.30 p.m., they're doing a pro-Palestine event here in the city of Missoula from Madison Pedestrian Bridge to the Red X's. Missoula pro-Palestinian uh, movement is doing a march through Montanans for Palestine, standing with indigenous people who have also dealt with the colonization issues and fear from their current war that could see the uh, erasure of a culture through annexation of their lands. This event culminates by the Red X's in the downtown Missoula area where speeches will be held. Uh, Lindsay Sterling is going to be at Kettle Amphitheater starting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, tonight. The Gravy Ladies is going to be at the Old Post playing some bluegrass music at 7 p.m. Uh, writing of Norman McLean and Timothy Schilling is going to be a book reading at the Fact and Fiction at 7 p.m. tonight. Bo Akimbo is going to be at R&B at Cranky Sam Public House. Borghese Production presents Battle of the Boy Band. Zootown Arts is uh, featuring Ace of Hearts, uh, Pup Cake Drake, Aiden Bedding, Victor Hollow, uh, Bird Brain, uh, Travis T, Dominic Softly, and Dante Styx. Uh, it's hosted by um, uh, Eunice Sex. Uh, Eunice, Eunice, sorry if I mispronounced it, but anyways, live your fangirl dreams and watch your stunning cast of heartthrob kings show their moves at the Zach stage. Advanced tickets are recommended. And the show is strictly 18 and up. And this is going to be at the Zootown Arts Community Center. And so that's going to wrap up your Friday night as we jump right into your Saturday markets. 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Downtown Missoula is the place to be. Find some produce. Find some um, originally made knickknacks from local Missoulians. This is uh, stuff grown and created by Missoulians for Missoulians to buy. Uh, scavenger hunt, hike, and challenge. The uh, Hostead uh, Glamping Cabins is doing a scavenger hunt for their, over their 100-acre property that will take you a two-hour adventure through the forests and mountains of their property. The Homestead, along the highway, along the way, six active stations await for you, such as splitting wood, panning for gold, using a slingshot, guessing riddles, identifying trees, and more. And so this is uh, forest therapy and all sorts of fun things happening there for the scavenger hunt. All right, story time. Every Saturday at 10.30 p.m. in the Missoula Public Library, a great way for kids to get engaged with reading. After the fact, they'll do, we'll, MCAT will do our dance party, which you've probably seen the ad if you're watching the beginning of the show. Moon Island Dolph Homestead, they're having open hours. This is city-owned land in which they try to educate the people about uh, the old school homestead living through this eminent domain acquisition of this property, and which is being used for education, outreach for Missoula's past. It's kind of like a open air history museum. And speaking of museum, Missoula Art Museum is doing a museum tour every Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, Karis Nursery is doing some workshops uh, as a one-on-one -on -one guidance for the staff to uh, show people how to make fairy gardens and terrariums. Uh, three plants, decorative moss bark, 
rocks and other decor. Additional plants and decor will be available as add-ons. And so it's expensive because you have to buy the supplies to make these uh, fairy gardens and terrariums. So overdose prevention and response training at Missoula Public Library starting at 11.30 a.m. here at the Missoula Public Library. Uh, MCAT Saturday drop-ins. We're back to do some stop animation for kids who want to do some art, Legos, and more happening at 1 p.m., some short movie making, learning the operations, learning how to piece the story together using inanimate objects every Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, Zootown Arts Center is doing a Monster Farmer, which is uh, the Montana Repository Theater is excited to announce its upcoming education fall tour production, Monster Farmer by J.M. Christensen. This educational and engaging play will have two public performances at Zootown Arts Community Center on the 31st uh, with uh, 2 p.m. and at 7.30 p.m. before it gets tour across Montana. So they're getting the first dibs. Exhibition opening, The Beauty of Animal Being at Radius Gallery. The Beauty of Animal Being is uh, featuring works from four, four, uh, four outstanding artists, Jesse Baggett, uh, Kevin Hammond, John Isaiah Pep Pepian, uh, Diane St Stenson, sorry, each of their own way. These creative cast new lights on kingdom animal animalia and the symbolic space animals occupy in our culture. Um, and then Saturday night, starting at 6 p.m., Jimmy Smith is going to be playing some folk music at Imagination Brewing Company. Candlelight, a tribute to Coldplay on strings. They're going to be at the MCT, so they have a Candlelight uh, concert. Uh, Queens, the Queens and Mr. G at Draftworks is going to be playing some uh, miscellaneous music. Dueling pianos at Stave and Hoop, starting at 8 p.m. Saturday night. Uh, Dry Socket with Infinite Animal and Frontside Crime is going to be playing at VFW, playing multi-genre music. Uh, karaoke at West Side Lanes. Uh, candlelight, a tribute to Adele at MCT at 9 p.m. So they're doing new candlelight shows at MCT back to back. Um, Chris Moon is going to be uh, every Saturday at 10 p.m. And then as, I, as we get into uh, the Sunday, we have the 18th annual Peace Festival. The Garden of Thousand Buddhas is hosting a, a Peace Festival this weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day. Go out there to the garden and have some peaceful time at the uh, Garden of Thousand Buddhas. Missoula Public Library is also doing a full scavenger hunt starting at 12 p.m. Just will the library pick a, la a library scavenger hunt sheet at the second floor and start searching. Garden City Salsa dance class at the Rocky Mountain Ballet Theater at 1 p.m. on Sunday. Pinball tournament at Odd Pitch every, uh, it's a weekly event at 4 p.m. And they have comedy at 8 p.m. at the VFW. And then we got some rocking karaoke, country karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. All these events and more. So. That's kind of what's happening there. Uh, the River City Roost Festival is next weekend. MCAT's going to be doing a kid-centric event from about uh, 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m. Doing a kind of like a offshoot stop animation. We might have some, a couple of fun things there as well. It's a great opportunity to get in, and get to know MCAT a little bit more. There, more. I'll probably be there. It'll be fun times. So um, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.